Done. It is Kaz from In The Trenches with Kaz, and I'm sorry about the delay. Let's just basically helping a young woman that's moved out the back, and um, she can't get her internet on. She's having a whole drama, and she was here with her uncle to come and ask if I could help, and they didn't realise that I had all this getting ready to go. But you've got to be the Good Samaritan. Help those when you can. And tonight's going to be an interesting subject because it's about being 19 years old, setting yourself up for the future, you know, in some version of a perfect life. And we'll talk about that in a moment. I can see us all here. I can see all of our fantastic um, uh, moderators here. Great to have you here. Um, we can see all our beautiful members here in green. Dwayne, we could have that conversation soon. And, um, yeah, guys, it's a pleasure to see us. I hope the sound is going well. Let's get some thumbs up if we're good to go. Hey, Kirsten, there you go, mate. Flip. Hey, Skirty. Jacko. How you doing, mate? I'm doing well. I'm doing well. I'm out of here tomorrow for a couple of days for something that is really touching my heart. A bit of a call out to my dad, the best man I know, and hard shoes to fill. He's 83 years old. He's about to buy his first ever brand new car because he always put his family first. And he buys that uh, on Wednesday in Newcastle. So I'm going to drive up there to make that the most special day possible for him. But it puts a, a, a tear in my eye knowing that it's the last car that my dad will ever drive because no doubt it's going to outweigh him or outlast him or his ability to drive for medical reasons. The day that that car, you know, he's not allowed to drive it, I will buy it off him, give the money to my sister, and then I'll be his chauffeur. And probably his nurse as well. So you've got to look after family. That's what we do. And uh, where are we? G'day, Daz. How you going, mate? Sounds good. Very good. Hey, Jan, how you going? Spicy Mitball, Simon Powell, brother Daz, wing nut. Yes, I am. And we've got Zulu there as well. Good to see you. I used to be a platoon sergeant for the Zulus. Today's topic is a little bit different, but it's not. In this lesson, you you know what? How about I get someone else to explain it better than me? Here we go. I don't even have the submarines. But the reason Wait. why has here with a friendly rant on if I was 19 years old right now, what I'd be doing to give myself the best chance of success 20 years from this day, if I was to enlist, hand in the air, oath or affirmation on the king or God to serve his majesty for the next 20 years. Not a day less, not a day more. 20 years, 19 years old, takes you up to 39 years old. I would join the military. Why would I join the military? It is so that you have the best chance of having the best group of friends, stability for family, fitness in your life, a lived life, financially beneficial. And how are we going to get there? And what do I recommend? Okay, I recommend that you do join the army before you go to uni, before you get a trade, before you go to any other force, go to the army, the navy, or the air force. Submariner gets paid more than anyone, and they're looking for people right now. And they don't even have the submarines. But the reason why I say this is so that when you get into the military, you are surrounded by people that think like you, that have no immunity to the truth. They get told on the daily basis where they're above, on the horizon, or below it, and underachieving. Now, when you're in the army, you're going to do all of your fitness during military time. And if you want some GST on that, then you go and do that in your own time after hours at Olympic gyms, Olympic pools, etc., all for free on Commonwealth land. The whole time you're getting paid. When you go to Kapuka and you go to the School of Infantry or the alternate, I'm staying in my lane, then you will not get a chance to spend this money. So it makes sense that we teach you about financial literacy as well. If I was 19, doesn't have to be you, I would say to myself, I'm staying in for 20 years. I'm going to get into compound interest in blue chip shares within the Australian ASX, okay, the stock market. And then from there, what I'm going to do is I'm going to let that compound and compound and compound. So I've got two people working for me in the background while I'm having fun getting bigger, chasing gals, getting rid of diseases, and living my life. Who are those two people? One is compound interest, which will be accruing and accruing and accruing, and the other one is the superannuation, 
and everything in between you can spend on whatever you want. I'd go to North Queensland because the price of living is lower, where the rent is subsidised, where your friends are in a garrison town, and then you get 10 weeks off a year basically to do and chase whatever you want to do, whether it be around your mum and dad and Danny, okay, whether it be to go overseas, okay, if you get the fever to travel. Adventure, living life, financial literacy, mateship, friendship, fitness. These are all the reasons that you could say from 19 years old when I'm 39, I'll have ticked off all those boxes as opposed to the chaos that may happen if you do something for the sake of I didn't know what else to do. That's what I would do if I was 19. I'd make a phone call tomorrow, I'd start the ball rolling, and I'd let the fear of, of am I ready be the inspiration for me to get up onto that treadmill, to get out of the gym, to get onto the chin-up bar, to do the running, to do the push-ups, to do the dips, to do the sit-ups, to do the calisthenics to make me the best version of me. I'd take my family name into the future. I'd give myself the best chance of success. And then when I'm 39 years old and I've got the money from the compound interest that's been accruing and the money that's in my pension, I'm still considered very, very young, then I'd go and work maybe in a oyster um, uh, lease. I'd do something that I wanted to do, not had to do. And that's all I'm gonna leave you on today as I get back to letting the other guy speak that looks a lot like me, my clone, and that is what I'd do if I was 19. See you later, take it easy, love and respect, hug your mum before I do. See ya. So team, <clears throat> just trying something a little bit different there. Something that goes to show you that we do put a little bit of work into these topics, these subjects, making thumbnails, videos, trying to keep it um, going for you. It says here, YouTube says put an ad in here. You know, we've got to fund the channel somehow, don't we? Um, guys and girls, it is so important. It is so important that you understand that time in the market matters. What I'm talking about here is compound interest. There is so many things we could talk about when it comes to this and the lack of financial education that you will get at school will not stead you well in the future. The financial um, education you get from parents can normally be sometimes worse. We need to break that cycle. If you go for a house, no worries, but good luck because if you're a 19 year old and you do not have money in the bank, significant money in the bank, and what if you did and you bought a house and end up with handcuffs? That means you can never do anything. You can never go anywhere. You never live your life in the hope that one day you own that property only to potentially lose it in a relationship or end up ultimately thinking you're doing the right thing. But then you realize later that one, I didn't make the money on it. It's not the fairy tale that I keep getting told it is. You know, the handcuffs don't come off. And, um, you can't turn back time and then start living life again. It's yeah, money doesn't necessarily make you happy, but by God, you know it's better than living pay to pay. Oh, there we go, three hundred from Yeet. There you go, mate. You're going in soon. Not too cow. Thank you for the donation. I will buy a piece of rusty chicken, which means raw, and I shall scoff that because I couldn't feel sicker than what I did the other day. Avoid the cycle of pay-to-pay -pay living and create that philosophy that breaks the cycle of materialistic spending before it even begins. What do I mean by that before I show you a video? That is that we learn to spend money frivolously, frivolously, you know, uh, one purchase at a time. Before we know it, we've got no money left. We spend it on vice, we spend it on food, we spend it on clothes, we spend it on you name it. Everything in life at the moment is bouncing up. When you go to join the army, and you go in there 19 years old with no debt, and then you're in Kapuka for your initial three month or thereabout um, uh, station there for your training, and all that money's in the bank, the most you've ever had in your life. And then you go to the School of Inventory, you can get out on weekends, you can escape, you know, but you're not going to spend it all. That money, you know, doesn't need to go, or maybe it does go on buying you a car when you get out that you own outright. So however much you save is what you spend on that car. So that is a debt you don't have. That's a good idea. Alternatively, it might be that that money goes into 
the ASX and buy something like IVV, the S&P 500 equivalent domiciled in Australia, or something like the A200, you know, top 200 companies in Australia. I'm not a financial advisor team, but I'm starting a conversation with you. This is something I would do. We'll look at something quickly. Aperture says, thanks to all the vets and those serving for your contribution to the country that I'm proud to call home. I love our home. And you're worth protecting. Team, you've got people in the chat right now that are over 50 years old. We don't have that time. We were not able to do these investments when we were younger. You couldn't invest into the stock market without someone being an intermediary. You can do that now. Okay, so. With compound interest, if you were to put money in on a on, on a continual basis at 19 years old, taking into account on 52, about to turn 53, the amount of swagger that you would have waiting for you just in that compound interest in 20 years or 30 years is the magic number, you're talking well over a million dollars, you know, based on how much you put in at the start, time in the market, compounding interest, it gets bigger and bigger. You know, but it's also being met with the entire time with a psyche that you can access that money or take your foot off the brake and allow the compounding to happen without you continually putting in money yourself. Okay, It's someone working for you in the background while you're asleep on Picket and Tully. That's what it's doing. Well, your superannuation is over there. So when you're 39 years old, okay, which has been 20 years in the military, you can get out and say, what do I want to do for a living now? And the entire time, if you have a life-changing event, you can access that money. If you get into a house team, I've had five houses, sold them all. Glad I did. There's nothing wrong with owning property team, but by Jesus, it's more expensive than house repayments because then you've got to throw in rates. Then you've got to throw in um, the fees of, of keeping that place from falling apart. It never ends. It never ends. I wish I'd discovered this. You know, I really do. Go on, HC. Mentally, uh, for the coming years and plan to join infantry when I'm 20. The best chance of success at uh, Special Forces. Is it feasible to go through the direct entry program or work three or four years as an infantry soldier? Go on. I would go, for starters, down to the links below and get onto the Patreon so you and I can have a conversation via this bat phone in the next couple of days while I'm up the coast. Getting some salt water on me nuts. What I'd also recommend to you is, yes, go to the School of Infantry, which you will anyway to go to commandos, and stay with the Infantry Corps for two years so you can work out how difficult it is to be an infantry soldier, let alone reach the stars and go for SF, you know, because that's what commandos are. It is basically a steroided infantry unit where every single person is a leader, where everyone is just so competitive you know, but also team members, that they bring out the best as a group and staying on the horse is harder than getting on it, if you know what I mean. Uh, Maxwell Club, uh, Diddy, Dingo, I don't think it's possible to, to fail year 10, year 10 unless you drop out, okay? I gave it a good hot crack at it. <laughs> uh, the, the link for Patreon is with Simon Powell right there. Thank you, Simon. Uh, Dominic Fletcher, hey, Kaz, just got a quick one. Would you know uh, when the next Kapuka intake is? I believe it's on Monday. It's on Tuesday because we've got someone who I had coffee with today who's going on it. He's a great dude. On the hope and dreams, I'll make the next uh, intake ASAP. ASAP. Ace Marshalls, Dominic, I'm going in the end of March. There you go. So you're probably going in on the same one. Zulu, nothing but negative balance in the bank, uh, but going for the defence still. What better way to rejuvenate it, man? Because I don't know another profession <coughs> other than fly in, fly out that allows you to disengage from your bank account, go out in the field environment where you can't touch it, get intermittent uh, bonuses of bush pay, you know, or um, incidentals for travelling for courses, etc. And you can inject that into a bank account so that you don't even realise that it's going in there. And before you know it, you will get excited. You will see it grow. You'll have a net fucking worth and a lot of adults don't have that what's a net worth your net worth is determined by how much debts do you have how much assets do you have take the debts off the assets and that's what your net worth is and you'd be really upset to see how many people are my age that are still in the negative 
because of relationships, because of health, whatever. And what about those that have got the money, all of the money, great job coming in, but they haven't worked in a, a goddamn office or outdoors with a window on the wall for the last 30 years? They've got the money, but they can't go back and buy a life. Their skin looks like they've just come from the under decks of the first fleet. You know, and, and you can't get it back. You can't get it back. After 50 will be you, okay, reliving your first 50 years or 30 years after you, you become an adult and, and continuing on from that. You're not going to retire, and if you do, it's because there's something medically wrong with you because that's where your friends are, where your new conversations are. Yeah. JT, uh, hey, Kaz, great info. I'm 19 and got my enlistment day on the 4th of March. Fantastico, Dora would say. So you'll be going in almost the same time as the guy I had lunch with today. Have you done uh, TSE and know uh, if it uh, is that top secret? If so, is it worth it? I'm not sure what that is. TSE. Ring that ACAS. Do you know if it's now the nine week course at Kapuka? I believe it is the nine week course. Debt free since 2018. Simon Powell, well done. We've got to have assets too because you've got to have options. So let's get to that one. Oh, before I do that, the philosophy of breaking the cycle also means while you're investing, you become not the Scrooge, but you also start to go, I'm not going to waste money on that. So it makes you more frugal. And it's important to do it when you're 19 rather than 28 because then you haven't had the bad uh, juju set in, the bad habits set in, where you get into that pay-to-pay -pay sort of philosophy. Again, I'm not a financial advisor, but if I have any regrets in my life, it is how much I spent, like Robbie Williams, on weekends and Thursdays, throw in a Sunday sesh, you know, and, you know, maybe Tuesday too for the for the girls that work in the bars. Mm. McDonald's coffee. Eka, just had my defence interview today. I haven't seen your name on here. Are you subscribed, mate? Ask me a question. How did you go today with your defence interview? What do you want to join as? Now, what do you want your life to look at? Like, remember that when you join the military, you're joining the military for what? For adventure, okay, for stability, and to be around people that are like you. Yep. Uh, looking blessed, Kaz. Ali Poe, that's a good name. 1984, was that when you were born? 1984 with a bullet. Or what's that, um, 1984? Shit. It'll, it'll come to me in a minute or probably when I'm asleep. Financial and military gives periodic bonuses for attention, extra pay for toil, as well as allowance to so, say, uh, what are we going to do with them? What do we mean by that? Okay, not to mention just the, the cash up you get at the start, but now we've got three-year incentives, you know? that come in, uh, and that can be up to $50,000 to stay on for another however many years, and you're probably going to stay on anyway. So why not say to them, yeah, mate, uh, thinking seriously you're getting now, I want to go and be a shearer. You know, I want to rip the wool off those girls. And then they give you the 50 grand, you go, joking, I was going to stay anyway. And that money, imagine that 50 grand either goes on the next car that you buy, so you, again, you're debt-free and have some left over that you put in the ASX, and this time you put it on IVV, you know, the, the ticker for uh, the S&P 500, you know, or maybe you take yourself on a holiday as a reward for being frugal in the past. Someone's just joined Patreon now. Wait two seconds. Well done, Lockie. Thank you very much, mate. I'll be sending you a message when this is over. Thank you. Um, big man, also heard your potty on the Zero Limits podcast. Very cool story. It was a great listen. Thanks, mate. Thanks, Biggie. Um, Matty is a great dude. It was a pleasure to go and do that with him. Uh, episode 158, Spotify, Zero Limits. Fantastic guy. And I love listening to him when he talks to police. Jaws, uh, JT, I'm a grunt, mate. Well done. I'm infantry through and through. Always will be. And I'll tell you what, JT, um, uh, where is he? JT, he's a grunt. Let me tell you something. I'm not sure how long you've done. I did 24 years. I've been out for like eight now, you know, maybe a little bit longer, and I miss it every single day. So, bro, if your mates are thinking about getting out, if they don't have a plan, tell them to get in touch with me because I tell you, I should be speaking at the separation um, seminars 
so that people actually get to hear someone that's walked in the 343 telling them what's waiting for them. There is so many jobs that are waiting for you. But I tell you what, the itch will not be scratched. You will not find that mateship in any other career or job in the world, I believe. None. You won't find it anywhere. And I get told that all the time by other people that agree. Julius Caesar. Mr. Cal, have you uh, and Maddie only done the two podcasts? I did, uh, yes. I did one with um, with Maddie, and the second one was a debrief that he hasn't uh, put out yet. I sent him a message to say, hey, have I screwed up? Did I say something that you don't want to put that represents your channel? I get it, but uh, I'll wait for him to get back to me. William Bristow, don't join. Why is that, mate? You, you'd better have some advice on what they should do instead. You never tell someone with a passion for something not to do something. Don't worry about the politics. Commanders come and go. There was times in my 24-year career where it was not the best. And then there was times where it was the best thing that I could have ever done. All you got to do is wait it out. We don't get to choose our commanders. Um, right, and tell me what job is better, you know, and don't rate it just on money because money is not enough, you know. You can sit there and be like Crassus and get gold poured down your throat for being fucking greedy, you know, looking back and saying you haven't lived your life at all because you kept listening to other people tell you you can't do it or your internal message, Yeah. William, what call were you in? What service were you in? That's important too. Yeah. Zach, okay, so I recently passed my app test and got infantry, but waiting for assessment day, I'm only 16 and six months. That's young, mate. So I can't wait to uh, get in, sir. Take your time. I'm getting prepared, training two times a day. Any thoughts? I'd say you're doing everything right, but what I would say is hit the brake, take your time. You've got at least three years to get yourself to 19 to nearly 20 years old to do it properly, let the scaffolding of your body, you know, become what it is, or you might be like Charles Bronson and you might be ready to go at 14. Let's see. Uh, Joyce, it should be interesting to see how this combined section goes in a way. Just had a, a, a SVET in the past week. William, you're in infantry. How long were you in for, mate? I'm not trying to shame you. But what was it? Why are you saying don't join? Yeah, all the feedback I'm getting from people in the Royal Australian Regiment now and some of the guys in Special Forces are saying it's just as good as it's ever been. They absolutely love it and the politics hasn't touched them. Yeah, let us know. What is chafing your ass? Um, and it might be something that's valid. Uh, wouldn't say that you want uh, infantry, to be honest. The ADF is shifting towards less infantry roles and more desk jobs. Ace, no. It, the one, the only core that really matters is infantry, mate. You can't go to war without them. You know, they say that everyone's second job is infantry, but they don't know what they're doing when you take them for IMTs, infantry minor tactics, because it's not something that you, it used to happen every year. And there used to be some some pretty hard-ass people in every single core. But now they're sugar-shaking it so much that a lot of people, you know, are going to somewhere where that's the only core they could do. They've created so many different standards, you know what I mean? Spooky, sorry, not sure if you mentioned, but the retention bonuses, uh, what were they like? A lot of those were like if you made it to sergeant before uh, 15 years, you would get a, a year's pay taxed, you know, to do the extra five years to get to 20. Okay, there's also at the moment, depending on the core, three-year retentions to uh, stay in for another uh, three to four years after that. There's other ones where, depending on uh, what your role is, that you get a ROSO return of service obligation, and then you get a bonus to stay in so you don't get poached, all those sort of things. Um, HD says, I tell you what, join the Army is the best, but being able to be a member of the Science Mess is even better. Yeah, I'm still an honorary member of the Science Mess, and... Uh, at the School of Infantry, and I haven't been there in years, a lot of that is because of COVID and stuff, and uh, I'd love to go back there. It, the Science Mess is a fantastic uh, place, uh, institution, and uh, once you've got your red sash, which you can see hanging up the back there for infantry, uh, there it is up there, then, yep, you really are part of the family. Harry, gifted uh, one in the trenches uh, with CAS membership. Not too cow, mate. Thank you very much. Very much appreciated, Harry's boy. 
And uh, Jermaine Stewart was gifted that membership. So well done. Can we get some thumbs up for Harry for throwing some love out there to the rest of the channel? Razor the Goat. I have a defence interview tomorrow for infantry as a reservist. How is everyone's interview experience? At the moment, mate, they're screaming for people. It should be good. Again, when in doubt, team, get in earlier. Get on Patreon. Let me have a conversation with you so we can navigate your case. And not just that, so we can advise you, you know, while you're going through and navigating your career so that when you war game everything, you look like the guy that's got all the great ideas. No one knows where it comes from, but it still assists your team. Jamie, uh, had my medical a couple of weeks ago. Just hopefully uh, I get good news this week all about it. And, Jamie, I hope you do too, mate. Eager. Okay, what are your thoughts on combat engineer and the career progression? I think they're excellent. They're, I think they're really, really good, but they work too hard for my liking. William, I uh, used to be proud, but now they're so woke, I'm scared of letting this generation go to war. Uh, William, I don't, I don't know if you know, and thank you very much for your, for your, for your comment there. Um, I don't know if you know this. One of the things that is so scary about our society, um, and I'm not sure how many ladies are watching now, but this is a really scary thing, and I want to cover it in a video in the next few days. They're basically saying that relationships won't exist really as of 2030 because what's happening around the entire Western world is females are just leaning so fucking far left with radical feminism, LGBT, um, transgender uh, by proxy, you know, racism. They're just absolutely being brainwashed. So they're going so far left, but at the same time, all of you legends on here that talk about it feels like there's something coming, something bad coming. What do men do? Only men fight. So what happens is men start to think, I can sense there's something happening. Bad times are coming. So men then turn and they lean into, pardon me, they lean, in, lean into conservatism. So what happens when someone that is conservative meets someone who's far leftist? There is no, pardon me, there is no middle ground. There is no acceptance. It's impossible for there to be love because there's no respect for conversation. You know, there's too much emotion wrapped around decisions. So when the men and the women refuse to see each other and guys only see girls as something to lay on for a night and they're allowing them to do that because of the uh, online dating experiences, then ultimately what happens is, is a chasm that happens between them, which will eventually mean there's going to be a glitch in the system and we're going to see population, which is already falling across all Western metrics and below our replacement level almost. So we've got some really bad social uh, dilemmas coming our way. Japan and South Korea are already getting hit very, very hard by this. China even worse. And now it's hitting all of the West. Hmm. Well, I heard today uh, on, a, on a video where a woman was saying a guy, if he was pro-life, that she couldn't possibly date him because he doesn't want to take the life of a baby. That doesn't make sense to me. Um, anyway, Sarah Sands, how you going, love? Uh, Zach, hey, I understand I am going in at 17, but I want to be in the infantry for my life and I want to be a platoon sergeant and be a leader. Well, platoon sergeant's not a leader. He's the support of a leader, but he's the wise man. He's the guy that is the senior section commander, I like to call him. You know, the guy that's made all the mistakes or seen all the mistakes and knows how to get you out of a fix. And he's the guy when he talks, you know, people shut up and they listen, especially if he was promoted out of actual uh, meritocracy. Yep. Delicious. <laughs> Wingnut, Brownie, relax and enjoy the experience. Oh, here we go. Hey, Scott, how are you going? Uh, it was great to catch up uh, with you live. Might have to uh, give my phone back to the staff now. Have a good one. I didn't realize you're actually there now. Not too cow. Investing in the future in Kaz. Can we get some thumbs up for Yeet here? Who, uh, <laughs> let me tell you, I won't tell you where that person is right now. Anyway, I woke up. Uh, how is it? How is it that we have a military where? How can we expect people to want to join, to be proud, to be stimulated, motivated? You know, as a 19-year-old listening to this right now, 
when you never see someone in uniform, when we're not allowed to have channels on YouTube, we're not allowed to give that, uh, sorry, that free advertising so people can actually see monitored channels from engineers. You should be able to get on there and go and not ask me what is engineers like. You should be able to get on there and look at the Australian Army engineers in action as each week a video goes up of one of their units that puts out a video. Infantry, same. Okay. Uh, MPs, the same. I don't want to do that. Yeah. What about artillery? Yep. Yeah. That looks like a good bang, so to speak. What have I got all these good ideas? Is it, is it because I must be on the autism spectrum, I, I think. I don't think like others. It, it just seems so easy for me, but some people make it hard. Do I hear it right that Kapuka is only nine weeks now? Three blocks of three weeks instead of three blocks of four weeks. Yeah. Uh, they're trying it out there, Gold Logie. As you know, the Army keeps changing things they don't need to change. Now we're seeing the magazines have been reduced for the amount of ammunition they carry. Mistake. That's a capability subtraction. Now we're seeing equipment where there is body armour, you know, but there's not room to carry water or machine gun rounds. Change things for the sake of changing, but what happens is you normally destroy something that has been wisdom incarnate, that has been learnt the hard way. Officers need to stay in their lane and senior NCOs need to step up and tell them that. <coughs> Teach Australian military history in schools, absolutely. And, that in, and William, you're right, and that includes the bad shit. You know, everyone's trying to be a communist and trying to be a socialist because they're not learning about it and how many people have lost their lives? How many people have heard of Mao Zedong? You know, and how many people died because of communism, socialism, you know, under him? Incredible. Matty Bridges, they'd rather waste money on their shitty two-minute uh, videos. It's my army. I hate that ad. Yep, getting a private to say it's my army and then watch them get their ass kicked when they go back. <laughs> get a haircut. Blinky B. Uh, Navy has just announced what it's uh, doing after strategic review. Okay. Is there anything interesting, mate? Yeah, if I if I could, I'd go and be a submariner if I wasn't scared of small spaces and homophobic. You know, nowhere to run on a submarine if the whole crew turns around and says, you're going to be our mascot. Yeah. Anyway. So what's the next one? Boom. 20 years goes quickly and finance does bring happiness. It absolutely does. When earth, earth, not old money just inherited, but also offers you options and securing the future, except the fact that you will never retire. And I mean that, team. I mean it. If you retire, that's a sad thing. You know, what are you going to do? You know, you should have so many hobbies that you want to live forever, you know, because you're never going to be able to uh, basically complete them all. There is nothing better than having the, your mind engaged with hobbies friendships, stories, and commitment to groups of friends, but also having the option that you can financially say, yes, I can go to that reunion, or yes, I can go to Da Nang in Vietnam uh, to go and taste the food while enjoying uh, uh, their temperature while it's winter in Australia. Yeah. Two years uh, in Navy versus six years in Army. There is no way that you should be, there should be no two year sign on. You do not know what it's like to be a proper soldier or airman in two years. You don't. You, you couldn't. You know, a year of that has been in training, the other year has been marinating, and then you become a, um, a, a private P or equivalent, which means proficient because the blue book is now full because you've finished what you've started, completed your. Uh, range practices, your field uh, uh, commitments, etc., for individual and collective training as well as unit and army. You don't you don't even know what you're doing. Two years, or well, you're starting to know, but that's about it. Uh, JT, no nah, man, you'll be fine. Kapuka is a breeze anyway. It is. Kapuka is easy, but it's also so goddamn hard. When I was talking today to this fellow who leaves in five days. I was explaining to one of the things that sucks the most is when you get to Kapuka and you get told what your platoon number is, number 23, for example, you're going to get there and each morning starts, you're not allowed to get out of bed and shave, you're not allowed to get out of bed and do a poo per se, 
you can if it's if you really need to go. But what happens at six o'clock in the morning, because they're supposed to give you eight hours sleep every night, so you have no excuse not to suck off the invisible man during lecture rooms during the day, to fall asleep, to goof off, to be able to use sleep as an excuse. But what happens when they when they walk past and it says hallway 23, I'm not trying to give PTSD to those that are serving members here, you know, they've only got to say hallway 23. And then all of a sudden you're going to hear the crescendo of the hallway 23. You know, if you're going to really um, stand out, hallway fucking 23, give some people some laugh, you rip your bed to pieces, put it over your shoulder, run into the hallway, and then stand looking at the uh, school shooter that's straight in front of you looking back at you with a shit haircut, mirroring yours. And that'll happen every single day. It's the rudest way to wake up. And by the time you've been there, after red tabs and you're on the blue tabs and yellow, all of a sudden what happens is your eyes will just go bang, open. You know, what time is it? 5.58. No! 16-hour day about to start. You know, sucks, but it's great because you're doing it as a group. Everything you're doing is a group. Every time you pass something, reset, start again. It's excellent. Excellent. Be religious on Sundays because then you get to use your phone in the all-denomination service over near where the Sully Man used to be, and you have a conversation with people that aren't from your platoon. It's excellent. Well, Jaws are not allowed to bring uh, your own socks at Kapuka because you have to have uniformity within your barracks uh, loadout. What I'd do, but in your uh, in your bag, you bring your, your jeans, your collared shirts, all that stuff, but when you go to um, Canberra War Memorial, I hope they still take you there, then you can have your Explorer socks, which are fantastic for the field environment until I get spear grass in them. Hallway 25. Let us know what your hallways were in here, team. 25 says, Brady. Jaws, hallway 34. Ranger, hallway 13. Kaz, hallway 11. Hi, Robin! That was me. Spoons, hey, Kaz, can you uh, sign on longer than the minimum period of service? Uh, no, you can't. But as it comes up, then you don't have to re-sign on. It's called open. Um, open-ended service, which I don't agree with. It should always be re-signed on and give that kid some Cactus Jack's cash. You know, do it for him. Let's have a look at this video for a second, team. This goes for 11 minutes, but we're not going to need it for 11 minutes. Hallway 14 says Dave D. Rap. Fi Hallway 54. Look at this one. Please have some patience with me while we're watching this. This is a British guy who's a lot older than you that started a lot older than you, but this is available to you right now. Rewind, right fucking now. Guys and gals, if you don't educate yourself as early as possible, then you're going to be playing catch up for the rest of your life. You know, one day you're going to have children. I really hope so because it's the best thing in the world. You know, well, it feels like it is, but uh, hallway 35 till I die, says James. Thank you very much. The donation again, that'll go on some raw chicken. You know, but there's nothing worse than seeing your own decisions have kept you from having a better future. And I'm not saying be a miser, but it is important to give yourself the best opportunity of having a better later life. Yep. Let's have you reached a very important milestone in my dividend investing journey, which I'll share with you in a moment. This guy's voice is fantastic too. He sounds smarter than me. What I'm trying to achieve is to generate enough passive income which will eventually surpass my full-time day job and therefore allow me to reach financial freedom. Imagine waking up one day and realizing you could actually st No one does that when they know Tully's the next day, I tell you. Stay in bed or do whatever you like and still earn the same amount of money as you do from your job. The difference is that now the companies you own are earning the money for you and paying you in the form of dividends. What I want to show you in this video is how easy. Can we get some thumbs up just out of curiosity um, for those? Uh, G'day, Carl. How you going, mate? He's doing drill at the moment. <laughs> if you know what compound interest uh, is uh, and compound interest investing, put a thumbs up and put a thumbs down if you have squandered fortunes in your life and you regret it and wish you had have invested it to give yourself that opportunity or your family that opportunity, you know, as you got older. Thumbs up for yes, thumbs down for what have I done? It is to start the ball rolling. 
Here is every denomination of British currency from one penny all the way to a crisp £50 note. I have gone from earning an average of one penny no. a day in passive income to finally achieving the highest denomination of £50 a day. If you are a dividend... Zulu and Spoons, Harry, yep, yep, I'd be thumbs down, it's too tight, yep. And you want to pass on opportunities, break that cycle for your children's sake, you really do. ...and investor, then you'll probably be somewhere on this line. We are simply at different stages on the long journey. You see, I don't really worry about the ups and downs of the stock market or even the actual value of my portfolio. All I do is add spare money in each month and buy shares in companies which pay reliable dividends, <laughs> which I reinvest and put the new money to. Can we get some thumbs up at the moment for Carl P, whose life absolutely sucks at the moment for this 24-hour period? Um, he's there with some great buddies. I'm, I'm not going to go too far into it, but let's just say he's not enjoying life and he won't be sleeping tonight. And tomorrow he's going to be an exhausted individual. To work, which pays even more dividends. Let compound interest do all the heavy lifting for you. I'm not going to sit here showing you spreadsheets or exponential graphs of what you can achieve if you do X, Y, or Z. I'm simply going to show you what I actually achieve through sticking to a simple plan and keeping myself motivated by setting small targets along the way. This is not investment advice, and I'm simply showing you my own journey. I first want to... See you later, Simon. You know, thanks for tonight, mate. I look forward to catching up with you next week. Explain that I have a very ordinary job in the education sector. But I live fairly frugally and I made sure I pay off all my debts and built up an emergency fund before I started investing. And my journey in the January of 2009, when I invested first in the three banks Barclays, Lloyds and RBS. The platform I used was Barclays Stockbrokers, which is now called Barclays Smart Investor. It didn't allow me to buy individual shares in overseas companies, and ETFs were not mainstream. Well, I'm be listening to this for another three minutes, Sam, but you're saying get the hang of it. So I grew accustomed to buying shares in individual UK companies. In fact, I'd never even heard of ETFs until several years later. By February 2009, I technically reached an average of one penny a day in dividend income. It's really not a difficult target to achieve. If you buy shares in a popular company like Unilever, which has a dividend yield. Hey team, guess who's here? Mr. Buckaroonie, the North Queensland Channel, the guy that was in the army for 20 years, then he was a cop, and then he said, you know what? I like to see both sides of the argument, so he became a prison guard. He's here right now. Fantastic dude. Harry just gifted, uh, oh, that's very unracist of you. Harry just gifted a membership to a Zulu. Well done, sir. <laughs> well done, mate. Now your privates together. Well done. Zulu, welcome, mate. Build of 3.7% at the time of this video, you would need to invest around £100 to receive an average of one penny a day in dividends. I soon added another company, Aviva, to my portfolio. A couple of weeks later, I had reached an average of 2p a day in dividends. We're getting somewhere with this team. It'll make sense in a minute. Instead of buying individual shares, a FTSE 100 ETF currently pays a 4% dividend yield. When your portfolio grows to around £183... This, again, this is aimed at someone who's 19, minimum debt, goes signs on the line, oath or affirmation, goes to the military, I don't care what corps, I don't care what service, Army, Air Force, Navy. And you get in there and then uh, your, your first nine weeks, you haven't spent a cent, you could either put it in this or ready to supercharge it. What is that going to turn into 30 years later, 20 years later with compound interest? It'd blow your hair off, especially if it's a wig. You would be on an average passive income of 2p a day. A couple of pennies a day does not sound much, but I was enjoying seeing the amount rise. It also had a strange effect on my spending habits. I realised that if I spent less on unnecessary stuff, I could this reinvest more each month and the daily dividends would increase at a faster rate. You see, once you start measuring things, you can then work on improving them. In March 2009, just two months after starting, I had left a copper era behind me, and I was now venturing into a new age of silver coins. 
With the example of the FTSE 100, you would have to grow your portfolio. Well done, Wingnut. Well done. Foxy, this is like death by PowerPoint. I hope this Adele course is better. <laughs> yeah. Morel uh, low right now. Uh, DSR and moving. Darwin got me. Uh, and moving to Darwin. Yeah. It's a pity, Jaws. I don't give you the option to go to Townsville instead. Mr. Bill, don't know shit about stock markets. I should have had the gold card this year as well as a payout. Uh, getting our block and, and homesteading like when I was a kid. Jesse, uh, mate, we should have a, a talk one day, you know, just have a chat, eh? Uh, let us know if you want to do that. Go to £456 to achieve an average of 5p a day in dividend income. The next milestone was 10p a day in passive income, and this was achieved in May of 2009. It felt like I was getting somewhere at last. I wondered maybe... Head started. One pound a day really was. I'd reached an average of five pounds a day in passive income. Even if I gave up work and lived in a tent, that five pounds a day <laughs> would keep trickling in. Assuming a four percent yield, five pound a day would be generated when your portfolio grows to around 45k. But why stop there? In 2013, I added BAE Systems, United Utilities, SSE, and Centric pounds a day. In 2017, I added Greencoat UK Wind and the say. Renewables Infrastructure Group. At the end of the year, I was generating £29 per day. In 2018, I didn't add a single new company. I just added to the ones I had. And I also continued to... A hey, uh, Campbell Fox. Fantastic. Uh, the advice I'd give you at the moment before you put oath and affirmation up, and this goes for anyone that's in the military, because of the backward ass system that we have within the military, what I'd, what I'd really like you to do is change your actual name from not having your real name on here, representing yourself, a military member, etc., cetera, uh, in social media for your own safety, dudes. Honestly, you know, um, yeah. I don't know why we have to be scared of other Australians, you know, knowing who we are. We should be proud. We should be wearing our uniform on public transport as well and when we're going on leave, etc. But unfortunately, that doesn't work the way it used to. Build up my premium bonds. At the end of Wait, the year, 16. the portfolio was generating £32 per day. 2019 saw the purchase of the drinks maker Diageo and Bluefield Solar. Another is now at £40 a day. In 2023, I acquired Halion when GSK spun it off as a separate company. Now, remember those premium bonds I talked about earlier on? Well, in the 12 months from February 2023 to January 2024, my share dividends came to £15,175. Okay, guys, you get the hint. Okay, basically what we're trying to get out here is time in the market makes a difference. You don't want to be just saving your way up to a fortune as you get older. And remember this, this is one of the first times in the history of the world where you will not be able to afford a house. What do I mean by that? The deposit for a house now and the appreciation of house is up. So the deposit is going up quicker than what you can actually physically save to get into a property. If you've got a property, you might be goddamn laughing as long as you never sell it. Because when you sell it, then you're going to walk into a new property that's going to be overvalued as well. What this allows you to do is potentially perpetually rent, which sounds like it sucks, but you don't get all the bills that come with the strata. You don't get the bills that come with um, uh, the uh, the stamp duties. You don't get the, um, uh, the, the, the fixing everything up bills. You don't get the, um, the rates bills, all that sort of shit. You know, all the repayments continually there and the dramas that happen with the house. And you can't just sell it like you think you can either. Again, I used to have five houses. I've got rid of them. Now I'm an investor. That's what I do. And I'm not investing for me. I'm investing for my daughter. You know, I want her to have options when she's older. Options to live her life. Somehow we've made it that the the... Uh, dream these days is about how much you own instead of how much you've fucking done. Your life should be about an interesting, awesome life. You're not going to take the cash with you, and most old people have more cash than they've ever 
had when they were younger because they were so scared of going back to having nothing when they were pay to pay so they don't spend it and they go and end up leaving it to the crow on the fence, which is one of their relatives that never used to buy them a Christmas present or ring them anyway. doesn't make sense. Back to you guys. Here we are. Uh, Max, buy land, go off grid when you think, Kaz. Uh, mate, I've got to be near my daughter, mate. I've got to be near my little girl. Uh, Kimball Fox, thanks, Kaz. Oh, we'll get to change that now. Understand what you mean. Cheers, mate. Cheers. It's a nice name, Campbell Soup. You've got, yep. You've got the same, um, almost the same name as the Chief of the Defence Force. You should be happy with that one. Maybe related. Ray Muller, Mr. Buckarini under the Coca Cola sign. Bam. Is that talk about King's Cross? Jungle BJJ team. Hey, Kaz, you reckon 35 is too old to go for direct commandos? If we've already been an ex grunt, how long has it been since you've been infantry, mate? Um, all I'd say to you is if you're going to do that, come back into infantry and uh, have a crack at it, man. You know, you know what your pain thresholds are. You know, the commandos, they're, they're a different beast, but, dude, you know, I'd say have a go because either way they're going to make you do um, your infantry course before you go uh, in there anyway. You're going to do the new um, School of Infantry IETs, Initial Employment Training, uh, before you go over and, and compete to go into uh, commandos. But you already sound like you've got enough runs on the board that um, you're going in informed. I wish you the luck, mate. 35. As you know, there is a spectrum. You know, 35, uh, some of those guys in, in the Royal Australian Regiment in the Army right now, 35, they look like bodybuilders. They look fit as fuck. I was a monster at 35. Huh? Rural Hunter, no shower still. What do you mean? Yeah, someone from Townsville. Have you been to Cactus Jacks lately, Rural? Eight years out, but I'm a full-time uh, athlete. There you go. Be careful of going too far into that uh, Brazilian jiu-jitsu, mate. I don't know anyone that that ages well with. It's a fantastic sport, but the amount of damage that you take from other people, either overdoing it, not sparring correctly, over-talking um, uh, your limbs, be careful, men. Always advise young fellas uh, to not go into depth, not big depth anyway, if uh, it traps you. And, Jesse, what you're saying is true there. And the difference is when you go and buy a house when you're young, and the army will help you with that too, or you go into investing is when you're investing, you're getting interest. When you buy a house, you're paying interest. It doesn't make sense, does it? Where it does make sense, if you, if you go to Townsville and then you move out and you intend on staying in and get some other soldiers to move in with you and their rent is paying off your house, you're living there anyway, and you're getting that house below average market um, uh, cost for Australian real estate, and then one day that becomes your collateral to do whatever else you're going to do. I'm not saying it's a, a, it's a mistake to buy a house. I'm saying good luck trying to do it based on a 19-year-old today, you know, who doesn't have old money there to assist him getting there. And if you do get that help, it's not going to actually make you good with money. You get good with money by knowing not to spend every cent, by saving some. Yeah, I learned that lesson late. I've spent multiple fortunes. Yeah, I'm saying this because I don't want you to follow my lead. I want you to have opportunities I did not, and it's not fair that you are not. Uh, we give you body armor. We give you the best boots that we try to can. We try to give you the best rifles. But if we're not giving you the best educational support, you know, to pump that break and give you a chance, then how's that going to be good for mental health or morale in the future or the children or the family? You know? I believe the Army should be employing financial advisors to come and speak to you. Okay. You got Kaz, I'll leave at Kapuka tomorrow. Didn't get a chance to sign up and give you a call, but thanks for all the tips. Tomorrow. So you're going to sign on oath of affirmation tomorrow morning. Edgat, can we get some thumbs up for that poor bastard? Now, <laughs> good on you, mate. Um, I'm really proud of you. Tick the like button before you get out of here. And whatever you eat tonight will be going in a Kapuka, Kapuka shit house in the next few days. The only place where you feel like you're getting left a little bit alone. Hallway 16. Jesse Bell, I was 22 when we uh, bought our house. It destroyed us financially. You're 100% on the money. Thanks, Jess. Have you still got the house, but? Yeah. 
of course, it's easy for someone to say, but what about the house in Bondi Beach where they inherited from their grandmother, put it up for $14 million and it went for $21 million? You know, there's always going to be those. But just be careful of getting yourself so caught up that you're living pay to pay with not a cent for yourself because the anxiety will kill you. Yeah, as a platoon sergeant, I can tell you, when you're juggling soldiers that are poor with money, that also have substance abuse with uh, with alcohol or gambling, it's heartbreaking. Yep, it really is. Three, three balls. Kaz, how much uh, hazing happens when you get to the battalion? Uh, none, really. None. You know, go in there, buy a cart and a beer for your platoon. You shouldn't even be worried about that. To tell you the truth, breathe through your balls. Why is that worrying you? You know, if you do your job, you don't get picked on. You know, every single area, especially in male-dominated uh, industry, if you're a dick, if you communicate rudely, if you're not a team player, if you're a jackass, then hard things come your way. And it's the same in the army. And I encourage it as a platoon sergeant. You know, if you've got a guy who's not pulling his weight, it's easier for you to have a conversation with him than what it is for me. Yeah. Ragnar Lothbrok. Hey, Kaz, is 25 old, too old to enlist. Ragnar, with a name like that, you could serve whenever. I think of a man with blonde braids, you know, in cold water. Mate, absolutely not. 25 is fine. Jungle Beater Jay, Wingnut made, uh, hopefully they push you through, silly, uh, silly considering they need people. Yeah. Jesse, no, we lost it. The, the GFC, oh, I'm sorry, buddy. This uh, payout this year is going to give us a second chance. And 39 now, block fully paid off. Well done. Uh, get up the grid, homesteading. I've, as you know, I've got a, uh, I've got a camper van. I, I love people too much to to go off the grid, but I love traveling and I love micro relationships. Like every day, where you're meeting just a couple of people, having that conversation with them. Right now, infantry is a high priority role. Yep, most combat roles are absolutely. You know, and when the retention is bad and when recruiting is suffering, it's normally a leadership dilemma. Yep. Uh, Dave, what happens when most grunts just do four years and dip? This happens when most grunts just do four years and dip. But you know what the funny thing is, Jaws, is almost everyone you speak to that does four years will talk about their army service for the rest of their life, and they almost all regret getting out. When they realise the grass is not greener, that life, you know, when you're in the army, picture it, the, the loneliness doesn't happen. When you're in a civilian job, trade, university, business, etc., when your wife steps out, you know, or doubles in size, and you've got more stress at home than what you have at work, you can't get away from it. When you're in the army, you're doing PT, yeah, you can train within your work hours, you're with your buddies, you know, you can go out field. If you've got a problem with drinking, you can dry out when you go out field. You know, you can go on operations. You know, you can defend your country. Well, not defend it. No one's trying to attack us except from the inside, elbow, bloody wet mouth, mouth breather, me too, hashtag. You know, but the military, I loved every every bit of it. When you're not firing weapons, when you're not in an APC, when you're not in a helicopter, when you're not in a, a vehicle having a chat, laughing with dark humour, actually looking down going, no one's got their phone on, have they? Some of that dark humour is some of the funniest shit. You know, people of all ranks become freaking comedians. You know, being around people that are like you, I tell you, it ends immediately when you get out and you will not find it anywhere else, nowhere else. Recharge those batteries, son. Jordan, uh, here you go, mate. Defence is great opportunity to put money away, develop uh, deployment, see field bonuses, low rent, yep, subsidised rent. Lower food costs, yep. You'd be foolish to put your uh, most of your money away when serving. Um, also, that 10 weeks off you get a year. It's as much as school teachers. Work that one out. You know, to be able to heal. To wear a uniform is fantastic. There is nothing better than wearing a uniform with a beret on, walking through a civilian location, having a wink at a kid, you know, and then maybe ripping off your Australia badge and then giving it to a kid who's having a hard time with their parents and they look at you like, like that clown from uh, Luna Park 
and you've made a difference to that kid's life and he might join the army now, what do you want to do when you're older? Don't know, not inspired by fucking anyone until they meet that soldier or that cop or a teacher or someone that gives them, the, the, you know, some sort of respect and then they're inspired to be like that person. Yeah. Rap. Uh, is, it, is there awesome mateship in tradies? I wouldn't imagine so. Okay. What about as in uni? No. No. They go to work, they get it done, they go home. Yeah, that's all. Oscar Manning, hey, Kaz, hope you're doing well. I am, Oscar. I hope you're doing well, mate. It's time to get out of here in a second, team. If you just want, I can stay on for another 10 minutes. Would, who would like me to stay on for another 10 minutes, for one hour and 10 minutes? Thumbs up if you do. The whole platoon lined up in two files. they will all hit you as you run. Afterwards, you were shouted at the boozer. You passed initiation. Yeah, look, I'll tell you. Okay, Rang, I'll do it for you, mate. I'll do it for you and Julius Caesar. I've got to do what Caesar says. If you want some time out and something makes you feel good, go and watch a channel called Wild Homestead. I'll say it again. Wild Homestead. Amazing channel. Really, really good. You'll love it. Time out. Living off the grid. It's a guy who had all the money. You know, a big, tall Canadian fella. He was a celebrity in China. Learnt Mandarin. And then after a while said, you know what, after his third wife, I've had a gut full of this shit. And now he's building off-grid, making his own log cabin. You know, it really is a holiday. And he's at 10 o'clock every Saturday night, he uploads. Perfect. Sahara. Uh, Spoons, good luck taking three months off, brother. Guys I, guys, I really wish I could just put a USB and plug it into my scon and download to you exactly the reason why I'm so inspired to help people, you know, that are young, that still have to walk on our footsteps in these, in these most precarious of times so that you realise you're not alone, that there's things that you can do out there and there is going to be people who try to tear you down at every level. But if the worst thing that happens in this lifetime is you watch Walter Mitty, is that you dare to travel, do you dare to join the military, to represent something bigger than yourself, to surround yourself and people like yourself, to know what it's like to be goddamn cold and goddamn thirsty and goddamn hungry, you know, to be hot as hell, and I don't mean sexy, you know, to dare to live, you're going to love it. I never met anyone that didn't. And I don't know any other job that's like that. Harry, he's going crazy tonight. He's gifted a uh, a membership. And it went to Phil, uh, Philip. There you go. Well done, Harry. Not too cow, mate. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Uh, T Laminator, Kaz, any tips for an 18-year-old inspiring infantryman? This video is all about that. Particular tips for adjusting and getting a head start on learning. Yep. Come to the channel, get on Patreon, have a conversation and have a platoon sergeant in the background talking to you, through you, to give you the best chances like a second father. Maybe I am your father. You know, and then we go from there. Guys, I've done so many videos on infantry, so many videos on army. I understand the back catalogue can be daunting. Yeah, but all I want you to do to be successful is live your life. That's all you owe God, Jesus, is to be able to say you died on the cross, you know, so that I could have a crack at life. You know, I'm not perfect. I stuff up a lot, but I try to be respectful to those and family. And even if I was brought up by bad parents, even if my teachers were crap, even if my boss is a dick, that doesn't mean I have the excuse to be one myself. Be the best version of you. Be the ambassador of positivity and help someone. You know, in the absence of someone else helping them, be that guiding light, that big brother. When you get to Kapuka, be the first person to pull everyone in your room. I don't mean that. I mean grab everyone in the room and say 10 fucking commandments. I can't think of one at the moment, and that is no one in this section quits. You want to be here. No one quits. If you're having a hard time, come and see me. I don't have to like you. But your bed, I make first, and then we move on to my bed. I will always help you before I help me because we travel at the speed of the slowest. And 
it's up to me to make you faster. You know, the best leaders are at the lowest levels and are at the same peer rank of those they lead. We lose them to special forces. That's a sad reality. Be the best version of you. Always think of the others, and then you forget that your shoulders are sore too. That's a fact, Jack. And Jill, if she's watching, dropped the fucking bucket, didn't she? Uh, anyway, Julius Caesar, do you have uh, a group where you talk about shares? Not yet, Julius. I thought about having a um, uh, a Zoom call once a week where we all go there and have a bit of a laugh. Um, but I've also thought about having a uh, what do you call it? Meetups where we uh, where we have something like a uh, like this, where ten people are on here at once, and someone is made. The, the chairman, the Alice of the Brady Bunch, so to speak. And then we have set questions that we communicate about with dark humour, maybe. You know, but you've got to be careful as a, as, a, um, as a creator of content because there's also always people out there that are trying to get a gotcha moment, that are trying to record something or create a narrative that can drag you into deep water. We've got to be careful of that. My roommates are really wanting to leave uh, during Kapuka I fought so hard for him to stay and eventually decided and and eventually decided to stay. So thankful he stayed. He's awesome. Currently at the School of Infantry. Rang up. That's all it is. It's a temporary suck as someone goes from young or from immature boy and starts to become a responsible man. Now, you just got to hold your breath a little bit longer. Rang up. Well done. Thumbs up. Yep. The Army should be happy. They should be thanking you. Oh, team, I'm going to play this last video before I get out of here for those that are just uh, jumping on or jumped on late. And this is basically, um, feel free to jump off if you saw this at the start. Thank you. Hit the like if you can, team. And this was the uh, what the, the crux of this video was about tonight. Gun, it is Kaz here with a friendly rant on if I was 19 years old right now, what I'd be doing to give myself the best chance of success 20 years from this day if I was to enlist hand in the air oath or affirmation on the king or God to serve his majesty for the next 20 years. Not a day less, not a day more. 20 years, 19 years old, takes you up to 39 years old. I would join the military. Why would I join the military? It is so that you have the best chance of having the best group of friends. Stability for family, fitness in your life, a lived life, financially beneficial. And how are we going to get there and what do I recommend? Okay, I recommend that you do join the army before you go to uni, before you get a trade, before you go to any other force. Go to the army, the navy or the air force, submariner, because paid more than anyone. And they're looking for people right now. And they don't even have the submarines. But the reason why I say this is so that when you get into the military, you are surrounded by people that think like you, that have no immunity to the truth. They get told on the daily basis where they're above, on the horizon, or below it, and underachieving. Now, when you're in the army, you're going to do all of your fitness during military time. And if you want some GST on that, then you go and do that in your own time after hours at Olympic gyms, Olympic pools, etc., all for free on Commonwealth land. The whole time you're getting paid. When you go to Kapuka and you go to the School of Infantry or the alternate, I'm staying in my lane, then you will not get a chance to spend this money. So it makes sense that we teach you about financial literacy as well. If I was 19, it doesn't have to be you, I would say to myself, I'm staying in for 20 years. I'm going to get into compound interest in blue chip shares within the Australian ASX, okay, the stock market. And then from there, what I'm going to do is I'm going to let that compound and compound and compound. So I've got two people working for me in the background while I'm having fun, getting bigger, chasing gals, getting rid of diseases and living my life. Who are those two people? One is compound interest which will be accruing and accruing and accruing. And the other one is the superannuation and everything in between you can spend on whatever you want. I'd go to North Queensland. Honestly, team, when you were a young man or young woman, there is nothing better than when you've been good with your money 
Then one day going, I'm going to have a splurge and go out with $1,000 to go and do what you need to do. To me, you'd buy some new boxer shorts because I ruin them all the time. But there is nothing better than having options because you didn't spend every cent you had over the, every pay last year. Because the price of living is lower, where the rent is subsidised, where your friends are in a garrison town, and then you get 10 weeks off a year, basically, to do and chase whatever you want to do, whether it be around your mum and dad and Danny. Okay, whether it be... Harry, exactly. ...to go overseas. Okay, if you get the fever to travel. Adventure, living life, financial literacy, mateship, friendship, fitness. Case is going to be a passport, bro, I can see it. Not necessarily going overseas for the girls, but going overseas for the peace. I love peace and street food. These are all the reasons that you could say from 19 years old when I'm 39, I'll have ticked off all those boxes as opposed to the chaos that may happen if you do something for the sake of I didn't know what else to do. That's what I would do if I was 19. I'd make a phone call tomorrow, I'd start the ball rolling, and I'd let the fear of am I ready be the inspiration for me to get up onto that treadmill, to get out of the gym, to get onto the chin-up bar, to do the running. Thanks very much for tonight, Harry. Thank you to all the team that are leaving at the moment. It was great to have you here. I hope you took something away. I hope this started a conversation because that's what it's all about. It's not about financial advice. I'm just advising to at least research finance because otherwise you're working and working and working for basically you're going to work for the rest of your life if you don't do it smartly. Okay to do the push-ups, to do the dips, to do the sit-ups, to do the calisthenics to make me the best version of me. I'd take my family name into the future. I'd give myself the best chance of success. And then when I'm 39 years old and I've got the money from the compound interest that's been accruing and the money that's in my pension, I'm still considered very, very young, then I'd go and work maybe in a oyster um, uh, lease. I do something that I wanted to do, not had to do. And that's all I'm going to leave you on today as I get back to letting the other guy speak that looks a lot like me, my clone. And that is what I'd do if I was 19. See you later. Take it easy. Love and respect. Hug your mum before I do. See ya. Hey, team, how we going? It is Kaz. Get off here, mongrel. Okay. So, team, in conclusion, please. Set yourself up. You look after yourself with body armor. You look after your fitness. You look after your psychology. Look after your wallet as well. Okay. It'll give you options and it will make you happy when you know a rainy day that's coming won't break the bank. With that out there, I'd say appreciate all those guys and gals that are about to go to the school of cool. Um, take it one day at a time. Sense of humor. And um, attitude will get you the whole way through, no matter how bad it is. You know, you're going to have days where it's wet. You're going to have days where it's cold. You're going to face something that's rare in this society, and that is failure. But then a wrist is going to come down and grab yours, and it's going to pick you back up, and you're going to realize you're not alone, and you're not in Kansas City anymore. You're part of the goddamn herd, and we're happy, and we're lucky to have you. So 100 points in advance. Welcome to the crucible. You're going to get the pressure but you're going to come out a better version of yourself. Always look after the guy beside you, and then you won't even realize that you were suffering as well. See you later. I wish I was there. Hallway 11. Catch ya. See you later. And thanks for being here.